Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off this week with some awesome DIY 3D printing research. The guys over at the CPS Drone channel on YouTube uploaded a very interesting video demonstrating their tests in making an underwater 3D printer. The initial idea was to see whether water would be able to quickly cool extruded filament to allow for better overhang printing, and while it did seem to improve things, they figured that the water buoyancy was also playing a factor in this. It's definitely an interesting watch, especially in terms of all the considerations when waterproofing the printer, as well as the problems faced regarding corrosion. I wonder whether this kind of concept like rapid liquid printing will eventually be able to negate the effects of gravity, enabling more complex consumer printing. Another great DIY project was posted recently too by Sunshine, who we've covered previously. This time he's back with a DIY metal 3D printer that can electroplate prints on demand, potentially allowing for print-in-place electronic circuits, motors and more. Regular electroplating requires a bath of electrified chemicals to dissolve metal and deposit it onto a surface, but this method can be imprecise and cumbersome. To overcome this challenge, Sunshine created an on-demand system that pumps small amounts of this chemical directly onto prints to deposit copper, then once finished it sucks the liquid back up, making way for the next print layers. To make this work he even went so far as to design a custom pump, and a genius simple mechanism to switch between the printer's hot end and the copper anode. And on top of all that, Matt the 3D printing nerd is back with some more research with the 100, which is apparently the fastest FDM printer on the planet. The new video shows off the new high-speed edition of the printer, which is now even faster, and Matt goes through all the different changes in this version, as well as the bill of materials which comes to less than $500. It can print the speedboat bench test in 3 minutes and 3 seconds, and is claimed to be capable of high-quality printing at 1 12th the time of an Ender 3. Again, check out the video for much more info. Moving over to electronics and I saw this Kickstarter the other day. The Looking Glass Go is a 6 inch holographic display. It has a resolution of 1440 by 2560 pixels and users can view images with depth without needing any special glasses. We've seen these type of spatial displays before, but they're usually much larger and designed for use by 3D designers. A user can make new images using their phone camera and there's also an interesting AI feature which uses diffusion models to add depth to existing flat images. Prices start from just over $200. In other news, and at a talk for University of Arizona College of Optical Sciences, Douglas Landman from Meta's Reality Labs Research Division teased a new rendering of the Mirror Lake VR headset prototype to show what future models may be like. He explained that features such as auto varifocal focusing, multi-view eye tracking, ultra-thin pancake lenses and reverse pass-through are now all physically possible to achieve, and his engineers have already drawn up real-world parts lists to make this type of lightweight headset a reality. If you're enjoying the vid, please leave a thumbs up, it really helps the channel. Meta also released more research which makes their codec avatars even more realistic. Apparently it uses a type of AI model called Gaussian splatting to achieve this. It's a little over my head as to exactly how it works, but the output is undeniably impressive, resulting in hyper-real avatars that dynamically animate and respond to light in real time. The ultimate goal for all this research is to enable photorealistic telepresence in VR. Researchers at the Technical University of Munich have also developed diffusion avatars, which is a method for creating 3D avatars with realistic facial expressions. This was achieved by combining 2D diffusion models and 3D neural networks. It can animate avatars by taking animations from input videos or by generating facial expressions via a simple control and has similar potential applications to Meta's research for things like VR telepresence, gaming and movies. In similar news, Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba also released research on using diffusion models to animate still images. Named Animate Anyone, this new system builds on existing work in the area to provide better consistency than previous image-to-video models. I think all of this kind of research underlines just how nuts things are about to get. It will eventually get to a point where it's impossible to discern what's real and what's not. Switching to automation, and a team at ETH Zurich has created an autonomous excavator that is capable of constructing six meter high dry stone walls, something that previously took a lot of time and manual labor to achieve. What's cool about this is the excavator has its own vision system and can automatically view and decide which is the best stone to use in any given moment, guessing how much each weighs and calculating where the center of gravity is. In logistics and residents of the Rua Holati and Jatkasari areas in Helsinki will be able to receive parcels using an autonomous delivery robot starting this month. Customers of the Adlibris store will now be able to order online and have the option to book a delivery using the Hero Parcel robot. 
they will be able to pick a time and place and the little machine will bring packages directly to them. And ending this week with an absolutely bonkers robot coming out of Japan. The Archax is a 14.8 feet tall wheeled mech suit, reminiscent of those from the animated Gundam series. It can be piloted by a single person using a joystick and has articulated arms and hands. Designed by Tsubami Industries, this 3.5 ton beast is not quite on the same level as those imagined in popular culture. It can only travel a max 6 miles per hour and is generally slow, but like that other robot I showed a few weeks ago, it is undeniably cool. The company plans to build and sell five of these, with each mech costing roughly $3 million. Alright, that's everything for this update. As always, source links are in the description. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting-edge news, or check out the MOSFET playlist. See you next time.